So many people died across the world in the COVID pandemic, millions. And yet, in first world countries, deaths are still elevated. Now, certainly in the UK, they even altered the method of assessing for excess deaths. And I'm going to show you why we still have a problem. Even our latest statistics looking at hospitals in the UK and what's happening in accident and emergency indicates that we have a serious problem in front of us. What are we going to do? What does it mean? What is the science? These are the kinds of questions that need to be answered and answered quite urgently if we are going to find solutions that can mitigate it. Part of what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the answers. We're trying to find solutions for you to help you to be better prepared. You know all about disease X and the fact that it is in existence or it's planned to be in existence should indicate to you that you need to be prepared. Join us as we launch this Kickstarter. We'll be talking about Disease X. This is a book. We've just started it, and we want your support to help us make it come into reality. This is a Kickstarter. It's only going to be there for two weeks. We have our target set. Everything is there. You just need to click on the link below. This is essentially what it's about. And, and so when we take that into consideration, it shows you the challenge we have in front of us. Remember, Andrew Bridgend in the UK, one of the few politicians who stood up for people, worried about excess deaths, he has lost his position. That's how serious it is. And I'm going to show you now why this is still a problem. Here is some of the statistics that's coming out of the UK. Deaths registered weekly in England and Wales. Uh, the provisional week ending the 16th of August 2024. So this is up-to-date information. This is right at the cutting edge as to what we're seeing happening. And the question is, are excess deaths actually lower than they were? This is what it looks like when they break down the statistics. And you can see here that the deaths, when you look at it closely, it doesn't seem as though it's going down. But I want you to watch something very carefully. This is showing you the weekly deaths, and the blue line represents the total amount of deaths. This black dot that you see going along here represents the average or the expected deaths. And what you will notice that in terms of the timeline, this is January 2023, all the way to August 2024. That's the timeline on every week. But if you look closely, you will see that this dotted line is higher in 2024 than it was in 2023. That's a very, very important point. Why would that be the case? What really was going on? in terms of the statistics that cause that to change. And it's important then when you look at the data, when you look at how they analyze the data, they made sure to point out to you that the way they're analyzing the data has changed. Here is what it looks like. Numbers of expected deaths are official statistics in development. We advise caution when using the data the methodology is under development, which means that the statistics are subject to modification or further evaluation. This strategy was changed in February of 2024. Why did they do that? Because suddenly now you can't make sense of the data before that. And you have a problem where suddenly excess debts are low and you would find in the statistics, based on the uh, information, you can see here that they said in the week ending the 16th of August, 2024, 
the numbers of deaths in week 33 was 11.4% lower than the expected number. So this fits in the fact that they are saying that excess deaths are lower. And this is why I'm saying you have to be a little bit more savvy when you look at the data and you try and understand what's going on. And this is why I said you have to look very carefully at the chart. Now with that information, go back to the chart. You'll see now that these dots for the average were lower in 2023, but suddenly in 2024, because they changed their methodology, suddenly this seems to be much, much higher than it was. And so suddenly now it appears that excess deaths are lower. But when you actually look at the bars, because this represents the exact number of people who have died, other than the period here in January 2023, overall, this period actually may seem to be a little bit higher than it was in 2023, because this would here be February to March 2024. That looks actually higher than the same period in 2023. And so we seem to be having a problem with the actual numbers of people who are dying, even though apparently from the methodology, it suggests that excess deaths are lower, the same or higher numbers seem to still be dying. How in the world does that make any sense whatsoever? And so it's within that context and that paradigm that we really have to ask questions. But more importantly than that, does it fit in the real world data? Because if excess deaths are 11% lower, you would expect that hospitals would have 11% more beds. They would be relaxed. It's summertime. Is that the case? Well, let's take a look. This again highlights, this is the A&E attendances and emergency admissions. This is July, 2024. And they are looking here at the number of attendances. What they are seeing is actually not in keeping with what they're saying around excess deaths. When you look in detail at what it is they're saying about these statistics, is that in reality, what you've got here is that you have got an increase, 5.5% increase in daily average attendances in July of 2023. So that doesn't fit with the fact that excess deaths are 11% lower. How in the world does that make any sense? And actually, it even gets more important, well, more significant in terms of the data. You need to reflect carefully on this. And I'm saying this because I understand how it works in hospitals. Look at these numbers. What you have here is that in terms of four hour delays from decision to admit to admission this month, a daily average was in July, 2023, 3,492, increased to 4,172, which is a 19.5% increase in the summer period of 2024. Let me explain in case somebody doesn't understand what the four hour delay time is. What they're saying is, when a patient has come into hospital in an accident and emergency, they don't want them to be waiting there for excessively long periods of time. And so they have a target that the patient must be seen and discharged or admitted within four hours of that decision to be admitted. So for example, someone has a chest infection, they need to be admitted to hospital. Admit four hours for them to get a bed on a ward, or if they've had a hip fracture, or something very similar like that. And it's an important statistic because it represents pressure on the hospital system. And so you can see there was a 19.5% increase in that period of time. Now, that doesn't fit with excess deaths being low. That suggests that people are still quite sick. And even more significantly, look at this right below. They have highlighted here that with regards to delays of 12 hours from decision to admit to admission, that's the decision to admit from accident and emergency to admission onto a bed in hospital, this was 
an increase of 57.3% from July 2023. That definitely suggests a system that is under pressure. And that doesn't fit at all with excess debts being lower. This is why I'm saying that the real world analytics need to fit with whatever you are saying statistically, or else it doesn't mean anything. That's the problem at the moment, is that the reality is inconvenient. And so therefore the reality, instead of being acted upon, is being ignored. Again, let me show you the picture, just in case you'd missed it. Look carefully at it. Does this look in 2024 like an 11% decrease from 2023? Not at all. This looks the same, if not slightly elevated. You have to remember, people only die once. So if these people died in 2023, they can't die again in 2024. It means more people are dying in 2024. Something is not quite right. And this is why Andrew Bridgen sacrificed almost his position politically to stand up for people and to try and push governments to investigate the cause. That's all everybody's asking for. We're not saying that it must be this or it must be that. We just want it to be investigated. That's the simple point that we would like. Why is it not being investigated? Why is it not being addressed? Why is it not being fully, thoroughly looked into? That's really the question that we need to try and get an answer. So if you want frank, objective answers, make sure that you join me as well. There's a link below. I'm having these sessions, Macmillan and Members Session 2, and you will be able to then ask questions, um, ideally beforehand. We'll then go through it, have a frank discussion about exactly what we think is going on with you, with your health. What advice would you be able to take with you to your doctor? How does the system work? Part of the reason why I am concerned is because of my research into autoimmunity. This is what I think that it looks like. And you have to reflect carefully on this picture to understand why I say we have such a problem. This is the picture in my view. We have two situations where on one side we have immune priming and on the other side we have recurring infection. In the middle is the COVID storm. That's the bit that a lot of people don't quite get. They seem to think that one or the other is the problem. I don't look at it that way. I look at it like epoxy glue. One of them on its own doesn't stick very well. The other one on its own doesn't stick very well. But when you combine them, why there's so much pressure on the system is because we've got the combination very widespread immune priming of the population with recurring infection from the spike protein. When you put those two together, people get sick. That's what's not being addressed. That's what's not being faced. That's what's not being acknowledged. And we need to have an open, critical assessment of the science, looking at what was done to try and figure out how can we mitigate what exactly is happening at the moment. Final point I'd like to mention to you all, remember, part of what I'm developing here is I'm giving you answers, rapid fire answers, and you rapid pulse answers, I should say, and you will be able to see them in the members. We've opened up a membership group here on YouTube if you're there, and you'll be able to see comments, information that you won't be able to get otherwise on the general channel. But certainly, there'll be lots of information here if you subscribe and ask for notifications as well. But let's keep working at getting the answers. Join us for all the things we have said, Kickstarter and otherwise. Let's continue to push the science forward in 2024. Thank you and have a great evening.